So we've gotten to the point of the installation where we're running the wiring harness. For this particular installation, we're using some aftermarket ballast that are utilizing the 9006 plugs. Um, if you're using an OEM ballast such as the Slim Denzels or the Matsushitas uh, or even some um, Mitsubishi or even some Stanley ballast, uh, they will probably use a pigtail or plug uh, positive and ground that is different from a 9006 plug. Uh, if that's the case, you're going to have to cut off the, this particular part of the, the harness and solder on the, the appropriate plug. Uh, I showed that prior to this in our uh, single xenon wiring harness video. Please go back and refer to that if, if you need that in information. But for right now, these particular ballasts that we're using are using the 9006 plug, so I'm not going to modify this harness by any way. Okay, so when we're installing this, just using the relay as a reference point, there are two wires with O terminals. You have one without the inline fuse, that is the ground, that will go to the negative part of the terminal, black or ground. And then the other one with an inline fuse is, the, uh, is power, so that will go to the positive side of the terminal, red or power. Okay. Then you have a signal wire. This is the plug that will send a signal to the relay to pull power from the battery directed to the ballast whenever you turn on your low beams. So this 9006 signal wire plug will be connected to your low beams. And then the two remaining plugs are the, the ones that are connected to each individual ballast. Okay, so now I've connected the wiring harness. When you install the wiring harness, make sure that you ground it first, then connect the signal wire. Following that, I will connect the, um, the ballast and at the very end, I will turn on the, the power. So what we see in here is that we have the power connected here, we got the little inline fuse tucked behind the battery, and then we have the relay sitting next to the battery here as well. Everything is tucked away, away from the elements, away from water, um, so they're nice and clean. Moving down here, we have the signal wire that is going to be connected to the low beams. Make sure you snap that in place. And then we have the power ground going to the ballast. I have the ballast mounted here, and it's just a matter of just connecting that as well. The particular ballast that we used in this case is an aftermarket slim ballast. Um, put some double sided tape on it some industrial strength double side tape, stuck it together. Uh, that in itself is, is sufficient, but I put some uh, set of electrical tape here, I'm sorry, uh, zip ties to be on the safe side. If you are using slim denso ballast, uh, depending on the length of the cord, if it's a nine inch or a 12 inch, you can actually s slide it right underneath here, right underneath the headlight, and uh, that will be a good place to mount them. If you're having some Matsushita ballast, um, especially the one with the long cord, which is usually roughly about 13 inches, you can actually mount the balance as far as, as over here and then still reach around. Okay, so I figured this is a good moment to talk about a couple of things while the headlight is still taken out outside of the car because uh, it's a little bit difficult to show this once it's on. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about is, is the way this bracket that's uh, holding up the, the front part of the bumper, how that is attached to the headlight. When I said it was attached to the bottom part of the headlight, it was held right here using a 10 mm bolt. And by loosening that, the whole bracket comes off. The, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is the adjustment screw. Both the uh, sedan end and the, uh, and the coupe are using, are using one bolt here, one adjustment screw to, to raise the projector or the housing up and down. There's no le left and right motion, it's just up and down. Uh, the coupe uses an 8mm socket here, whereas the sedan uses a 10mm. If you go clockwise, you're lowering the, the, the light output. If you go counterclockwise, you're raising it. However, if you're using a screwdriver, which most people will do from above, using the gears here, uh, it's the complete opposite. So okay, so at this point the wiring harness has been installed and it's time to install the headlights. So before we actually do that, we may have to make sure that the turn signals are in. Low beams connected. 
and the high beams are connected. Okay, just as when we took the headlights out, we just didn't completely jank it out. We kind of turned it, torqued it. That's the same same technique here. We're gonna sort of turn it a little bit. And then make sure that everything goes in the hole there. And then I like to just take a 10 millimeter and just bolt it down on top. All right, next thing will be the brackets. Holding the, holding the bumper up or supporting the bumper up. Okay, when you're putting in the uh, the bracket here, make sure that it clears these two little pieces that are sticking out from the, the side tab. Okay, at this point, we're securing the bracket to the headlight and to the frame of the car. I got my 10 millimeter bolt here and my extension. Um, with my left hand, I can feel where the hole is for the bolt to go in. At this point, we're hand tightening everything before we're actually torquing everything down. So we got all the bolts down, and then we can start torquing everything down. Alright, before we put the bumper on, uh, it might be a good idea to just fire everything up to make sure that the turn signals, the hazards, uh, the parking lights, the low beams and the high beams are all working.
Okay, now it's just a matter of uh, sliding the, the bumper up. Make sure that it sits above the bracket but underneath these tabs. Don't forget the uh, hex bolts holding the center part of the center part of the bumper up. That was the screw. We have the 10 millimeter. 